All right, let us begin. Hey, how's it going? It's Friday. Um, it's the end of week, what is this, week five? Is that right? Yeah, wow, it's flying by. Um, we're going to do some more linked list stuff today. Before I start, I want to remind you uh, that you know you have a midterm exam next Thursday night. Uh, I have posted some study materials on the class website. So uh, there's a link that says exams, you see? And uh, if you click on that, it shows the syntax reference document that will be attached to your test. So that information on that document will be on your exam that you can use. Uh, I guess I can, I can pop it up here. Uh, it looks like this. It's got all the methods of all the collections and stuff. So um, it doesn't have every piece of C++ syntax. It's mostly a list of methods and stuff. So if you can't remember what's the method to add something to a vector, you can look in there. It also has the big O because I'm so nice. Uh, the big O of each uh, method. So there you go. Um, that's there. Again, this is already going to be printed and attached to your test on Thursday, so you don't need to print this. You'll have this. Um, but I want you to remember that on the test, uh, I don't allow you to bring any of your paper resources. You can bring your book and your big brain, but that's about it. And the reason for that is because I want to give you problems that are a lot like the problems on the practice test, and so I don't want you to bring the practice test and the solutions to the practice test with you. Okay? But I will let you have this, and I'll let you have your textbook if you own one. If you don't own one, there will be some textbooks up in the front of the room that everybody can share uh, in some sort of hippie, commie, socialist uh, paradise or something. I don't know. Um, anyway, practice exams there. The problems uh, are, uh, there are answer keys to the problems. And there's also a zip you can download that has a Qt Creator project. So you can type in, if you have a solution, you can type it in and see if your solution is right or you can check the answer key. Uh, the way these answer keys work is that I, give, I have one solution that I wrote. Your solution might be different, but it might still work. You know, there's always more than one way to solve a problem, so you can try it out and see. You can also try all these problems in the step-by-step -step website. They're all posted in there. You can try them. Um, so yeah, there should be plenty of materials here. I would say that just in terms of my advice for you for how to study, um, I would say that uh, Practice makes perfect. Like the more practice problems you do, the better you will be prepared. So just set aside some time to study and practice. Uh, when I say practice, I don't mean look at the question and then look at the answer and then say, yep, that's the answer, all right. <laughs> that's not fucking studying. <laughs> that's not what studying is. So like <clears throat> what, I would, what I would suggest instead would be to just look at the question and then earnestly try to solve the question and only at the very end of your process to peek at the answer. I've seen so many students who just peek at the answers right away and they go, yeah, this isn't that hard. And it's like, well, why, if it's not so hard, why do you have to peek at the answer? Anyway, so um, <laughs> try solving the problems yourself. Uh, some people also find that if all of their studying is on the computer, then it doesn't feel the way that the real test feels because it's on paper for the real test. So maybe you should even go old school and even print it out and go take some blank paper and try to write down. It feels really weird like writing code on a piece of paper, but that's what you're going to have to do on Thursday. So it might be good to practice that where you don't have a compiler and you don't have anything underlining your syntax errors. So go try that. And then once you're like done with the test, once you're like turning in the test, then you can go type it in and see if it's right, or look at the answer key and see if it's right. This is a suggestion. Um, also, you know, I don't have infinite amount of practice problems, but I have a lot of practice problems. There's two whole like fake midterms here you can take, or like if you use up all these, uh, go look at your section handouts. I know you didn't do all of those problems in section. The whole reason I gave you extra was so you could go study them for test time. Um, also, uh, I think there's other stuff here, like uh, if you want to look at like what topics are or aren't likely to be on the test, you can look here. Essentially, it's everything we're covering through today, uh, except for you know a few details, a few minor details are cut. Like, um, I'm not going to ask you to draw any graphics with G window. I'm not going to ask anything after today. Um, so if you see a topic here and you're like, I don't even know what that is. Well, good, it's not on the test, so don't worry about it. Um, these are the things that I would test you. Sort of the basics of C++ language from week one, all the data structures from week two, uh, big O and algorithm analysis. I might show you some code and say, what's the big O of this? Or I might say, I want you to write a solution to this problem, but I want your solution for full credit to be no worse than big O of whatever. Um, 
I would ask you to write recursion code, I might ask you to write code that does backtracking, and I might ask you to do some stuff with pointers, probably little list nodes, little link nodes that I want you to rearrange some of the pointers like we've been doing. Okay? Um, that's what I have for you for the, for the test. Do you guys have any questions about the exam since that's the current topic of discussion? <coughs> If you make any syntax errors, you get no credit. <laughs> I might be serious, huh, right? I've been so mean this quarter, maybe I meant that. No, I'm, I'm joking, of course, that's not what I mean. Um, it's much more about your algorithm, the idea. If you have syntax errors, like you forgot a curly brace, you forgot a semicolon, we actually let a small amount of that go with no deduction. If you have a lot of that kind of stuff, you start to get a small deduction, but you can still, if the problem's worth 20 points, you could still get about 18, 19 of them, even if you had several of these little piddly syntax errors. Now there's a difference between forgot a semicolon and like you totally have the wrong algorithm and that those aren't both syntax errors, you know what I mean? But but like little <laughs> or, or like like if you if you wrote uh, vector dot delete and you meant vector dot remove, but it's really obvious that that's what you meant, that counts as like a little piddly syntax error. But like something big like, oh you forgot to check for the empty list case or whatever, that's not a syntax error, that's an algorithmic flaw, that's different. So we're more trying to grade you on your algorithm. We realize that you don't have access to a compiler. We also realize that it's really weird to write code out with a pencil. So we, we try to account for that in the grading. Also, we have a lot of partial credit. So not only do we have buckets of points like you solve this part of the problem versus this part versus this part. So even if you can only think of how to solve the first half of the problem, you should definitely write that down because you'll get those points. But also we have things like you made a good attempt at solving this part of the problem versus you actually solved this part of the problem. So if you could take a stab at it that makes some progress, you'll probably get some points. Even if it doesn't work, even if it doesn't compile, even if every single input you fed to it would crash, if you have some good stuff in there, uh, we're going to try to give you points for your good stuff. So, uh, anyway, yeah, a lot of students, I think, if they can't think of a perfect solution, they lock up and it's like, hey, give me your half, half perfect solution. You'll probably get half or two-thirds of the points for, for, for that. Yeah? How much does code style affect Oh, style is almost totally not graded. Uh, the only exception to that would be, like, sometimes I'll say, you're not allowed to use uh, a vector on this problem. So now that aspect of your style is important because I said so. Um, or um, you have to do this recursively. I'm going to ask you a recursion question, and if you use a for loop instead of recursion, that's not what I was trying to test you on, so that's an important part of your style. But in general, like, you absolutely don't need to comment your code, although if you would like to, that might help the grader understand what the heck you're trying to do. Um, you don't need to have good indentation and good variable names and these kinds of things, although, again, doing that might make it easier for us to understand your code and grade your code. Um, but yeah, like you don't have to worry about style, generally speaking. Okay. There's a document at the bottom of the page called Exam Strategies. My colleague Julie Zelensky wrote some advice for her students and I liked it, so I posted it as well. You might want to look at that as well. Um, one thing some, some students and some section leaders talk about is pseudocode. Like if you can't quite picture how to solve the problem, can you write out in English a paragraph like, well, I would kind of do this and then I would sort that and then I would add that. You may if you like, but it's unlikely to get a lot of points. I think if you want credit, you should try to write C++ code. Even if your C++ code is a little wrong or has a little bit of the wrong syntax, that's better for us than pseudocode. Because a lot of times pseudocode is too vague. It's like, I would find the right element from the list and then remove it. It's like, oh, well, how would you do that, Einstein? You know? It's like, it's too vague. You know, you don't have to give me, like, basically the kind of pseudocode that you would have to write to get credit would essentially have to map one-to-one -to, -one to C++ code. So why don't you just write C++ code? So, yeah, some SLs will give you this advice. Like, if you can't figure it out, write pseudocode. And again, like, I would mostly say try to talk to me in C++. I think you get more points that way. Okay? But as I said, even if your C++ is imperfect or missing some stuff, that still gets partial credit. Anything else? I want you to have a medium fear level about this test. I don't want you to be terrified. If you go look at the study problems and you're able to solve them and you feel like you understand these topics, the real test, I promise, will be very similar to these tests. The kind of problems, the general difficulty of the problems, I will try really hard not to surprise you 
next Thursday, you'll say, oh, yep, recursion problem, here we go, or whatever. Like, I don't want to shock and surprise you. I'm not M. Night Shyamalan. I'm not trying to have a twist ending here. But I want you to, so I want you to have that confidence that if you go study and prepare that you're likely to do well. But I also want you to have a little bit of fear that if you don't prepare, I will try to come up with challenging problems. So, like, you know, you should study, right? I want medium fear, not panic. <laughs> Okay. Well, anyway, if you have other questions about the exam, email me, ask me on Piazza, come to office hours. I'm happy to answer them. Get homework four done so you can set aside time to study. Uh, having said that, let's go back and talk about linked lists some more, okay? So we started writing functions that would do operations on linked lists. So first, you know, we, we had a Qt Creator project where, uh, let me open this up, linked, linked list client, okay. So we wrote some code that would make a linked list like this, put some nodes together, attach them, link them to each other. And then we wanted to do things like print the list or add things to the list. So now we're starting to write these functions like print or add or whatever. So let's just talk about some simple ones real quick. Like what if we wanted to know the size of a linked list, size? So uh, you, know, you could know the size of a linked list by just keeping an int and counting, uh, knowing what the size was. Like I guess down here, every time I add a node, I could do some kind of plus plus and I could remember the size. But actually, if all you have is the front of the list, you could just figure out the size with just that, right? How, how do you do that? Yeah, just start at the front of the list and jump across and just count the number of times I jump and then when I hit null, I stop and I've counted the number of notes. Right, so uh, let, let's just write that real fast as kind of a warm up. So if you're gonna write a size function, now again, I didn't get a lot of time to finish all the stuff I wanted to talk about last time, but a lot of times when you write these linked list functions, you have to think about different states that the list can be in. And if you don't think of those states adequately, your code might fail in certain cases. So a really common thing that you need to think about is what if the list is empty versus what if the list is non-empty? So how do you know if the list is empty? Yes? Right, so if the front is a null pointer, that's an empty list, and so that's the size of zero, right? Return zero, and otherwise, non-empty list, um, you, I guess you don't have to say else, but I kind of like the, the sim symmetry of the if and else here. So if it's not empty, we'll do what he said, which is to start at the front and count the hops. Now remember the trick, right? You make a temporary pointer, like list node, I almost typed lust node. <laughs> like what is that? It's a node that points lustfully at you. Hey, you, I'm pointing at you. <laughs> let's not, let's not. Uh, list node current equals front. And then you just said go until I see the null pointer. So maybe like count equals zero or whatever. And then while the current isn't null pointer, I'll do count plus plus, and I'll do current equals current next, move to the next node. And then when I'm done, oops, will, while. And then when I'm done, I'll say return count. Okay, yeah, question. Do we need the if statement then? Will this yeah. literally return zero if the first, if front is null pointer? Yeah, actually it will. So, I mean, this particular piece of code, I think, is safe. Um, most of the other ones that we write, we are going to need this kind of separation. And the way you can tell is if you're talking about the, the next of something that's null, that will crash. So you want to make sure that your code can never get into a situation where you have a pointer that's null, and then you have an arrow on it, on that null pointer. And because we don't here, I think that you're right that we can delete the diff. So let's just do it. There. Okay, so that's the size of a list. Let's just test it out real fast. Up here in main, when I print, I, wait, uh, here, my list is, and then I'll say uh, see out size is um, size of node one. And what do we get? Size is four. I think that's right because we have four nodes here in the code that we've added, so it looks pretty good, okay? And actually, I'm not gonna spend time on it today, but um, there is, bless you, there is actually a, a fun, you can use recursion to implement some of these things. Again, I, I'm not gonna do that today, but how would this be recursive? Like, 
how is finding the size of a list similar to finding the size of another list? What do you say? Yeah. That's exactly right, yeah. Um, if I'm empty, my size is zero. If I'm not empty, my size is one more than the next guy's size. So yeah, that's exactly right. I think that's a really cool way of writing some of these functions. I'm not gonna do it that way because I think the recursion overhead, if the list is large, it makes a lot of function calls. So I'm not gonna do that, but, but algorithmically, there's a nice self-similarity there. Um, okay, so that's size, that's pretty easy. What about, uh, I wanna talk about get. Get would be like, I have a long list. I would like to get the int, the data, the element value that's at index four, or index n, whatever index, okay? <clears throat> so now, if it was a vector, if it was an array, you would just use like the brackets and you'd say jump to that index and grab the thing from there. But you can't use those brackets uh, here because the, the, the nodes are sort of linked together, right? To get to index four, we have to like walk forward to there. Do you know what I mean? So let's think about how to write that code real fast. What does that code look like? Yeah? Um, I would say use a for loop from zero to uh, less than index. Okay, for loop in i equals zero, i is less than index, i plus plus. And then just keep going next until we Was I calling it cur? I called it cur. Uh, wait, let me rename. There. Shift control R, rename any variable. Um, and then what? return what? Yeah, some people say return cur, but of course recur itself is the node. I don't really want the node, I want the data, the little int inside the node. It's, I've heard lots of analogies, the link list node is the little candy wrapper. I don't wanna eat the wrapper, that's yucky. I wanna take the candy out of the, I don't know, whatever. So get the data out of the node and return the data. Um, this code assumes that the index you're passing is okay. Um, I could pretty easily check for the negative case as an if statement. The greater than your size case, or greater than or equal to size, I don't know what the size is unless I walk. So I could do something like if I hit null and I haven't reached index, I, I would like to punt on the error checking. I think that code is code we could all kind of figure out how to add later. We got a lot of stuff to cover. But like, I wrote, I'm gonna assume <laughs> that you're not passing me a bad index, but I think a better implementation would check that with if statements, you know what I mean? And throw an error exception or some kind. Um, if they pass it. So, okay, so far so good, right? These methods aren't that hard to understand. We walk around in the list and do stuff to the list, right? So we wrote a method together, we started to write a function together called add, because I think, you know, this code here about like, well, next and next and next, 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 that's great and all, but like, really that's not how people build collections. They say, I want an empty collection, and then they say add, add, or insert, insert, like there's some kind of function for that. And like, if we've done our work correctly, I don't wanna think very much about nodes. By the time we're done, we're just gonna to totally be calling functions to do everything, and we're not gonna be directly in main messing with these pointers. That's kind of the difference between a client of a data structure and an implementation of a data structure. Main should get to just use this thing and not have to think about it too much, and the methods themselves should have to worry about all the little arrows and, and pointers and stuff, yeah. Yeah, um, you're asking about, I'll just repeat your question so it gets captured on the video. Um, you said like some of the methods we wrote, we had to write this ampersand here, and I didn't do that here in these yeah. examples so far. So when do I do that, when do I not do that? I'm kind of leading to that, so um, I mean, so far the code that we've written is fine the way that it's written. And the, uh, I'll get to this in a second, but basically the key thing is am I gonna modify the list or not? Okay. All the, the methods I just wrote were size and get, those were just looking at the list, I wasn't changing anything about the list. Okay. If I'm actually going to start pointing arrows to new places and change the structure of what's in the list, then I need this different syntax with the ampersand. So let's just let's go to that. So we wanted to write this function called add. And so I think what you would do is you pass in the front pointer and the value that you want to add, and it'll put that new value at the end of the list. So like I start out with nothing. I add 42, so then it would make 42 with nothing after it. I add negative three, it would put that up. You understand, add to the end of the list, right? We basically wrote the code to do that on Wednesday. I kind of ran out of time. So if you jump down to the code of that method, that function, 
it's pretty understandable. Um, you make a new node with a value in it. If the list is empty, so now we do need the empty case, unlike with, uh, with size. If the list is empty, make this new node be in the front. Make the front point to this new node. If the list isn't empty, then walk to the end and then attach this thing to the end. And the, this code is fairly self-explanatory. The main thing that you want to note about this code is that the loop test is I want to loop until the next is null, not until the current is null. Um, the reason for that is, I think I have a slide with a little picture where, let me find it. Uh, hold on, I'm skipping, uh, here, here, here. So I've, I heard this described as the James Bond analogy, like all, back in 1999 when I was learning this stuff. Of course, everything was back in black and white back then. Most people wore bowler hats and handlebar mustaches and monocles and stuff. We all just looked like the Monopoly man, basically. Um, but we did have linked lists back then, and I heard this analogy. I don't know if you guys have heard of James Bond, but like, uh, he's a spy. He's oh, oh, Jason Bourne. You heard of Jason Bourne, maybe? Him? It's like him, but, but uh, older. So it's like he's on a train, you know, and there's like a bomb on the train, and he's got to like detach the car. That's the bomb. I got to detach that car from the rest of the train, right? But it's like, if he was going to do that, he would want to be on the previous car so he could like cut this and then the bad car goes away, right? If James Bond is on here and he cuts it, then his ass is dead because he's standing on the bottom car, right? So it's kind of like that with linked lists. A lot of operations, this is the, this is the point, you know, if you don't want to remember James Bond, the point is operations that modify a linked list, that insert new content or remove existing content, usually to do those operations, you need to be one step behind, one node back from the place that you want to change. So if you want to add somebody here, you should be standing or looking at here to set the next of this guy. If you want to delete this guy, you don't particularly want to be pointing at him. You want to be pointing at the person before him so that you can tell the person before him, don't make that guy be your next anymore. Make nobody be your next. Don't make somebody else be your next. So the key idea here is being backed by one. And often the way that manifests in the code is that the code test says, I'm going to go until the next has some property that I'm interested in, not until current has a property. If I walk until current is the way I want, then I'm standing on the bomb car or whatever. Like I want to stand right behind the next one is the, so that's the loop. Loop until I'm on the last note. The last note is the one that has a null next. And then once I get there, attach the new node as is next, okay? Now, all that, I still have not totally addressed this question, which was like, what about that ampersand thing, right? So what is that and why do I have to do that? Well, okay, let me try to draw a picture. I don't, let me see, if, do I have a slide with a picture? I forget, I, I forget what picture I have today. Uh, let me look, let me look. Uh, well, where's James Bond? Okay, I can go back to James Bond. Where is he? Uh, here? Okay, here he is. So here's James Bond, right? Um, now, what if, okay, what if I say add front 20? Okay, well, so I make that current pointer. James Bond is the current, right? So I say, I set it equal to front, so it points there, and then I loop next, 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 and then I get here, and right now it's null, but I say you want to add the 20, so okay, then I make it point here. So in this example on the slide, that ampersand thing is not necessary. Like passing in the pointer of the front of the list, I follow the pointer to the end and I attach the new node, that all works fine, okay? So it's ampersand, you don't have to worry about the ampersand thing at this point, okay? But what about the case where the list is null? So I just deleted my linked list, bye bye. James Bond is like, ah! <laughs> and then he falls into the how do I do this? She falls into the flames below. Oh, no, 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 no. Linux, man. I got to get rid of it. Uh, I got I to gotta blow this fire up. Okay, got it. If you install Ubuntu, you can set your computer on fire, too. Um, okay, wait. So. I want to walk through what this code does if the list is empty and you say that you want to add something. And I want to show you why it doesn't work, okay? So you have to follow carefully here. So I'm going to try to make this fit on the screen at the same time as my picture, okay? So 
like that maybe. Okay, so I sort of mostly have the code and the picture here now. So imagine that I say add front 20, but front is null. It doesn't point at anything, right? Let's trace through what the code does. I first do this. I say new node equals a new list node. So I make a, a node and I store a, what is it, a 20 in there and it has a null for the next. And I call that new node. I'm just going to write new because I can't, it's hard to, to write letters with a mouse. Um, then I say if the front is null pointer, which it is, right? Now, actually, wait. Let's remember for a second. Let's pretend I don't have this ampersand. Um, remember that we have main. Main has a pointer. Oops, I'm like dragging my apps out of the dock. Um, main has a pointer called front. Front. And main's front pointer is null, right? Let's get out of here. <laughs> um, and then main calls add front 20, right? So now in the add method, inside the add function, I have this parameter named list node front, right? So list node front is a variable that's a null pointer. So okay, fine. If front is null, which it is, then I say make front equal new node. That means make front point where new node points. So instead of null, front will point like that, right? Right? So that looks good. Front is the new node. But that's the add methods version of front. It's not main's version of front. It's just like if main has an int x and main passes x to some other function and that function calls it as a parameter int x and that function changes x's value. It doesn't change main's version of x value, right? Because you're passing them by value. It's a copy or whatever. So it's the same idea here. Now you might say, wait, wait, wait. I thought the whole point of pointers was that you're like pointing to the same stuff or whatever, right? That's true. If you follow the pointer, you get to the same place. But if you make a pointer and then you make another pointer and you make another pointer, like <clears throat> if, you, if you don't follow those pointers, if you change one of them, it doesn't change the other ones. Like if you, if you have pointer one points here and pointer two points here, and then you say make pointer two be null, you know, that has no effect on pointer one. So if you make two pointers that point to the same place and then you turn one of them into null or turn one of them into some other thing, it does not affect what the first one points at, you understand? So like the key idea here is that like if I might need to change not only something that follows front, but if I might need to change front, then I have to do something different because this code will instead change a copy of front that's local to this function. It doesn't work. I mean, look, if you're having trouble with that aspect of the lecture, the sort of simple version here is if you're going to write a function that changes a linked list, you should pass the pointer to the list as a reference with an ampersand so that instead of making a copy of the pointer, they will share the same pointer so that when you change a pointer, it'll be changed in, uh, in mains as well. Yeah, go ahead. Is it because if elsewhere you might call upon the front pointer, you'll be calling on the main one, and therefore it's being unmodified because you right. can't find so if, if these were like two hour long lectures, what I would do, I mean, we'd all be sad and miserable for the long lecture time, but what I would probably do with that extra time is I would load the debugger, I'd hit the little bug, and I would actually run main, and in the debugger, it shows you the value of all your variables, and I would see like main's value for front is this or whatever, and then I'd jump into the add function, and it would say your value of front is that, and so I would actually watch and see. It takes too long to do it, really, in the short time that we have, but. It's a separate front variable. They have the same name, but they have separate scopes. The main one is the one that matters. Because when main says, add this to me, and here's my front, it doesn't want to hear that you set some other front to, to be that, right? Um, and just because you have the same name doesn't mean you share everything. This is why my plan to name my daughter Taylor Swift never materialized. <laughs> I thought maybe I'd get all of her money, but it turns out that's not how it works. Um, anyway. Uh, <coughs> The solution here, there's, there's lots of ways that you could solve this problem. The way that I'm showing you, the way I think is simplest, is to pass this not as just a pointer, but as a reference to a pointer. Now, I think some students like get real confused by that. What the heck, a star, ampersand, oh gosh, what's all that about? Look, all in, it just, it's, a, it's a reference, just like an int reference. Remember what a reference does? It means share instead of copy. If you pass an int by reference, we're all sharing an int. If you pass an int without an ampersand, it makes a copy of the int. We each have a unique copy. The same idea here. When main passes me their front pointer, 
they're directly allowing me to modify that pointer. If I set that pointer to be something else, main will see that uh, change. That's all this is. So that's what I'm going to do on any method, any function that changes the linked list. I'm going to pass the pointer by reference. Uh, there's a question. Go ahead. Can you pass a pointer to a reference? Like, can you do the ampersand and the star in the other order? Does that make sense? Oh, can you pass a pointer to a... So here we go. Can, can you blank? Uh, in C++, the answer to almost every can you question is yes. But the answer to almost every should you question is often no. So um, <laughs> if you pass a point, a, 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 a ref, instead of a reference to a pointer, you want to pass a pointer to a reference. Yeah, a pointer to a reference is just a pointer to the thing. Like, you don't pass a pointer to an int reference. You pass a pointer to an int. And it, you can also have references to that same int as well. Like, the reference. You don't point at references, you point at things. References are aliases for things. So you just point to the thing, not the reference of the thing. You know? I don't know if that made any sense. Like, you wouldn't declare it that way, you would just declare it as a pointer. Um, you can also pass a pointer to a pointer. I could have passed a list node star star. I think this way is better because um, if you pass it as a list node star star, you basically have to do a bunch of dereferencing of that. It makes the code pickier. You don't want to do that. So, Anyway, this is the fix. If you're going to change the list in your function, pass the list by reference. So that's what our add function does. Okay? So now let's do some other stuff. Let's do, um, what, what other methods do I have here? Let's do one called add first. So first of all, actually, I, don't, I guess I didn't show, um, let me comment out all the code from before. So now all I have is I'm trying to build a list using add, and then I'm trying to print the list. Okay? So actually, just for fun, I'm going to go to add, and I'm going to take away this ampersand. And I'm going to go up here, and I have to match it in the prototype, and I'm going to take away the ampersand. So I'm going to compile it, and now in main, where I try to make a list of four, let's see if it really works. So I run it, and it says testing the add function, and it didn't, I don't think it did anything. It just says completed. The program, the program ran, and it tried to print, and nothing came out, okay? So it's null. In fact, maybe if I wanted this to be a little more clear, I could do something like if front is null pointer, I could do C out null endl. Else I could, you know what I mean? So at least it would print something uh, if there's no list. So um, no, there's nothing there. All those ads, I did four ads and none of them accomplished anything in main. So now if I go back to add and I change it to a pointer reference again, then what do we see? I mean, it should work. Spoiler, right? Uh, now it worked. It, it added all the, all the elements. Okay? So let's just use that idea to implement some more linked list code now. Let's write one called add first, which means put it at the front instead of putting it at the back. Similar idea. Okay? Now, look, I didn't put these with ampersands, but they're going to need ampersands. So let's just go ahead and put an ampersand on that. And then add first, add first. So it would just take the front and the, um, the new value. So there. So how do I do it? Somebody help me out. Yeah, in the back. What did you do? Or are you raising your hand? OK, new node equals a new list node that stores that value. Cool. Now what? I want that node to be the first one in the list now, and all the other elements should be the ones after that one, right? What else do I do? Yeah. I make new node point front, and then make front point new node. New node equals front, like that? Yeah, and then front point the new node. That's close. I think it's not quite. You, you started it. Go ahead. Do you have, to, do you have any more uh, thoughts to finish this or to fix it? Yeah. I think it. New node equals front next. Well, so if you do that, what you'll have is like, like if I had uh, if I had one, two. Oh man, these are not to scale. Uh, three, and then I wanted to add a four. What I want is for the four to be here. Wow, that's so bad. <laughs> I want the four like that, right? And I think if I make front, if I make new node equal front. So wait, let's. Let's really draw this. New node points to this. So new, oh god, new node points to uh, four. 
And then if I say new node equals front next, remember what that means. That means make new node point where front next points. If front is there, then front next points to the one. So that would mean make new node not point to this new node anymore, but point to that. So I think that's not quite right. Uh, the pictures help though. What, how do I fix this so that the four gets, really does get to the, the front of the um, list? Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, other way around. I think it's close, it was just kind of backwards. New node next should be, for the one after new node, the next one after new node should be what the front is currently. So four is followed by one. And then if I say front equals new node, that means make front point not to this one, but make front point to this, this thing, right? So now we have the new guy at the front followed by this, the previous new guy. And as with many of these methods, the order of these statements matters a lot, right? Like, I think if you flip the order of these, line 114, 115, I think it doesn't work. You have to be careful, right? Because I think a lot of students, what they do is they draw this picture, and then they write out all the changes that they need to make, and then they kind of do that out of order, and then they write them all down, and it doesn't work. Even though their picture is mostly right, they, they did it out of order. So think about order. Okay, does that make sense? Now wait, what about usually when we have these linked list functions, um, we have to think about different cases, like empty list, non-empty list. Is this code going to do bad stuff if the list is, um, is empty? So what if the list is empty? We make the new node, that's fine. We make its next be null, because the front is null, it's empty list. So next after the new guy would be null, that would be right. And then I make the front point to them instead of null. So this code all works fine if front is null. Do you see that? So sometimes like you have to have if empty, not empty, you have to separate those cases out. But the key thing is like if I were doing front arrow something, I need to make sure front isn't null before I do that arrowing, right? Okay? So I didn't do that here, therefore I don't need to split those cases up. Um, if you really want to get trippy about it, you can actually smush all this into one line of code. Uh, maybe I'll leave what we wrote there, but then I'll mush it into one. So what you could do is you can say, you can pass a next also in here. So I could pass front, right? The one after him should be front. So I, I eliminated this line, right? And now front equals new node. Well, why don't I just say front equals that? So <laughs> front equals a new node that stores this value that's followed by front. And it does the right side part before it does the assignment part, so that's why that works. Those, those uh, two chunks of code are the same. Right? I know. Whoa. Um, so that's adding something at the front of the list. Does that make sense? Do you have any questions about that one? OK, well, uh, let's do some more. What's next? Uh, Size, we already did that. Okay, I want to do some removal stuff. Let's talk about removing. I think the simple case of removing would be remove the first element from the list, because that one's easy to get. So uh, if you're going to modify a linked list, you're going to pass the thing by reference. So I haven't done that yet. So let me just add an ampersand there, right? Let's go down and work on a remove first method function. Okay, remove the first element from the list. If the list is empty, it does nothing. So, what do I do? Help me. Yes? Check if the list is empty. Check if the list is empty. If I were not to check for that, I think this would be a case where the code would crash because I would be probably looking at somebody's next. You can't ask for the next of somebody who's null. So I agree with you. So if it's empty, so if the front is null putter, then I don't want to do anything. So maybe if it's an empty if and all the action is on the else, then maybe we want, if it's not empty, we'll do stuff. Okay, then what? I mean, if front points to one, that points to two, that points, wow, that points to three. I want front to go there, right? So like, what do I do? Yeah, in the back? Yes, front should point where its own next arrow points. Right. So instead of pointing to the one, point to the two. That's great. Um, there is a small problem with the code. 
Uh, remember my analogies about balloons and stuff, right? So this one guy has nobody pointing to him anymore. So his little balloon is going to make him float away. Um, boy, that's an awful balloon. Uh, wait. Hang on. OK. Whoa. That's a slightly less awful balloon. Is there some sort of burning fire underneath the link list or something? I don't know why. Um, OK, so uh, that guy floats away. I mentioned this really briefly last time that if you have a node that you lose track of, that you no longer have any pointer to, what C++ does in that case is that memory just sits there, occupied, like claimed, cannot be used for anything else for the rest of the lifetime of your program. It's called a memory leak because if you did that a lot of times, over time, your program would have all this trash memory that it couldn't clean up. And eventually, your computer could even run out of memory. Now, I want to be really clear. I think some students have the wrong instinct about this. It's not like you have to buy a new computer here <laughs> or like reboot your operating system or whatever. It's like when your program quits, when the program's process exits, the operating system throws out all of its memory, including this leaked memory. So in some sense, for our little program we're playing with today, this doesn't matter very much. Because we have this little main, and then main is done, and then all this stuff goes away. But if you have a program that runs for a long time, like a server on a website or a game that you're playing, that you're going to play for, you're playing Super Mario Odyssey, which just came out, oh my god. So of course you're going to play it for like a 17 hour straight marathon. If you're constantly having Mario lose linked list nodes in his code, your program's eventually going to crash, you're going to be mad. So you don't want that. So you don't want to let your memory leak. Now I want to tell you that um, most programming languages don't have this issue. Languages like Java, Python, JavaScript, Ruby, C sharp, they all do what's called automatic memory management. When an object no longer has any pointers that point to it or any code that's using it, it is able to figure that out automatically and reclaim the memory for you without you having to do anything. Which most people like better, which is like the civilized way of doing things. But C++ was made in 1983 and uh, they didn't have civilized things back then. So. Um, it doesn't do that. <laughs> so, okay, so if you want to make sure that the memory doesn't leak, you have to explicitly tell the, the, the language to free up the memory. And the way that you do this is you write the word delete followed by a pointer to the memory that you want to reclaim. So, like, the problem though is once we do this, the whole idea is we don't have a pointer that points at that memory anymore. <laughs> so like we have to kind of tweak this code a little bit to account for this issue. What you do, the, the, the pattern I like that I will show you in a lot of my examples is I make a special pointer called trash <laughs> and I make it point at the thing I want to get rid of. So like trash, T, R, I point it at what front is pointing at, which is this one box. Then I say front equals front next which means get rid of that pointer and make front point to the two, right? So now the only person pointing at the one is trash, and then I write delete trash. Okay, see ya. I guess I, it's more like a recycle bin, but whatever. We don't have to be liberals all the time. Um, so, <laughs> it's kind of a compost kind of a thing. Um, no, but anyway. <laughs> Delete trash causes this to go away. Now, the most common question I've heard about deleting, freeing up memory, is I think people misunderstand, like, there's a difference between a pointer and a thing that a pointer points at, like a list node object versus a pointer. Like, when I say delete trash, I'm not deleting this pointer. I'm deleting the thing the pointer points at, and that's the thing that I'm gonna lose. Now you say, well, what about the pointer? Who's gonna clean up and delete the, the, the pointer? Well. You never had to say delete before this week, right? And that's because every single thing that you declare that is allocated on the stack is automatically deleted when the function is done. So what things are declared on the stack? All the variables you've done before this week, ints and vectors and string, all of those things are on the stack. You never had to say delete for those because the function cleans them up. Pointers are on the stack of the function. What they point at is out on that heap cloud thing. So when you say delete, it goes to the heap cloud and frees up that memory. The pointer itself lives in the local variable stack of this function. It gets cleaned up when the function returns. You don't have to worry about cleaning up the pointer or you clean up what's pointed at by the pointer. Yeah? If the list nodes were declared on the stack, would delete the anything? If the list node for some reason was declared on the stack, 
it would be bad to call delete. Delete is meant to free up heap allocated memory. If you call delete on something that was on the stack, it will often crash the program. Like if you did something like, uh, you know, list node lol, and then you said delete, you couldn't say delete lol, you have to pass a pointer, so you'd have to pass like address of lol. This would probably crash the program because like, it would go look at its table of memory and it's like, what, I don't, that's not memory that I ever allocated to anybody. And it would probably, I don't remember whether it would immediately crash, crash, or if it would like horribly like claim that memory for use and now your function stack is being allocated into it. I don't remember what that does, but you don't want to do that. How do you know that the parameters are, like, if they're in the heap of Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, like how do I know that I should free this up? I think it's like an implicit precondition of this code. Like I didn't write that down here, but it's like, I'm assuming that all list nodes that are involved in this space are heap allocated. And if it weren't, that would be really bad to delete it. I don't think there's a test like, is this true or false heap memory? Um, I don't know that there's a test for that, although sometimes if you look at the actual pointer memory address, the ranges of numbers are different, but I, I, you don't want to be worrying about that. I think you'd rather just write code that has good assumptions about those kind of things. And actually, that does lead to a certain category of C++ bugs in large systems of like, Whose job is it to free this memory up? Is it my job? Is it your job? Is that stack memory? Is that heap memory? We're going to solve that in this course by always using heap when we do nodes of linked lists or binary trees or things like that. Yeah. So uh, why do you say delete ampersand all instead of just like Because when you write delete, you have to pass it a pointer. And a list node isn't a pointer. A list node star or an address of a list node is a pointer. Yes, it deletes what is pointed at. It goes to that chunk of memory on the heap and says that chunk of memory should now be available for others. But you don't ever write delete ampersand because this is evil code anyway. So, yeah. Okay, so that's removing the first element and that works fine. Let's write remove at a general place in the list, okay? So let's just write remove. I think I have some examples here. Like remove at index zero or remove at index, let's remove What's in the list at this point? We've got like five or six things in here. So like I think after remove first, front we delete this one, something like that. I think that's what we have. So let's try removing the element at index two and then print the list. So I think after that it should be like that, right? I'm just trying to gauge your expectations here. And then if I do it again, let's try it with like element, uh, you know, two again, which should be the nine. So that should be like that. And then let's do it with element zero. Let's make sure it works for element zero. Right? I'm just trying to clean this up a little bit. And so that should remove the 42. Okay, got it? Let's remove some stuff. So let's write remove. I think I have to go up here. I'm running out of time, but I think I have to go up here and put the ampersand here again. Okay. So it's a little bit like adding. Remember how when you add, you have to walk ahead to the right place, right? So we wrote some code for that in the add function. I mean, look, I think it might be illustrative to just copy the add code for a second. Let's just copy the add code and then say, what, what about this is wrong? Well, I mean, the fact that it's adding things is what's wrong, but. So if you're removing, you don't create a new node because you're not, you know, removing is not about creating new nodes, right? Okay. Hmm. Well, we kind of have this empty list, non-empty list thing. I'm not sure whether that's the right division, but why don't we focus on this case for a second? The sort of walk ahead, find it, remove it, kind of general case here. Start at the front. This walks to the end. I don't know if that's right. If I want to remove the element at index five, what index should I walk ahead to? I should move until I'm standing on index four, James Bond, right? So what I should probably do is I should say four int i equals zero, i is less than index minus one. You could draw a picture and verify this yourself, but you want to be back by one, move forward. Now the state of things is that I'm standing on a node, I'm James Bond, and I have a node that I want to get rid of right here, and I want the linked list to go like that, right, over them. I want to skip over them, and I want to cut the cord that's currently there. So how do I jump over this guy? How do I remove him? Back, yeah? Current next should point where current next next points. So you're right. I have a memory leak. So same pattern. List node trash equals 
the guy who's right now called current next. That's that guy with the X in him. And then after I move the pointers ahead, I'll delete my trash, right? This is correct code. We are missing kind of, there's a little bit of if else stuff going on here. Yeah, question, go ahead. Uh, the current next is uh, like null, what the like seg called? So would this ever crash? This would crash if you pass an index that was out of bounds. So right now the code relies on the user right. not doing that. The index was like the very last item in the list. Like current next would be a null pointer. So current next, next would like. Right, okay, so if, if I want to remove the last node, then that's the situation right there, the James Bond stuff, right? So current is here, current next is here, current next next is here. So if I say current next, should equal what current next next points at, it'll set this to have the value of that. So it'll set this to be null. So it'll, it'll, it'll be okay. I think you're worried about if James Bond was right here, but th that violates my assumption about what the user will be passing. If they, if they were standing here, that would mean they told me to remove size, size and there's no size of element. Yeah, question. Oh, ampersand trash? Well, I think the thing is you have to save your trash pointer because, oh, you're saying yeah. trash equals, oh, um, no, I, I think this is the way you want to say it because you really have to reach into these next pointers of the list. If you change trash to equal something, you're modifying a local variable called trash and you're not modifying the list itself. I was saying the ampersand trash because it doesn't It doesn't point to a pointer. It points to an object. If you say ampersand trash, that's the address of an arrow or something, you know? I know what you're asking, but I think that's not quite right. I have to let you go, but I will say the if here that we need isn't about the front being null pointer. This works for all cases except one. Do you know what that case is? I know it's time to go, but let me answer this question before we walk away. There's one case where this code doesn't work. The end of the list. The end of the list. That's close. It does, I think we just traced this is what the end of the list, and I think that one's okay. It's the front of the list. This code, and let me explain why. This code inevitably sets somebody's next to point to something different. You can't change the first note of a linked list by setting somebody's next to point to it. Let's think about it. If the, if the index they pass is zero, you need to jump the front to the next node rather than setting this current next node. Okay, I'll stop there because I gotta let you go. I'll post a code on the website. Have a great weekend. Good luck with your studying. See you guys on Monday. No, no new homework assignment until Monday.